Hello, people of the internet, it's Amanda, and for today's video, I'm back at it again with another J drama review ish sort of thing. I don't really review things, I just sort of like talk about the things that I love and don't love about a particular J drama series, so I don't know how you're gonna call that. But basically, um, for today, I wanted to specifically talk about this one because. I've never really had a series where I cried in like every single episode. <laughs> so if you're looking for something like that, then that's like just the initial reason for you to watch it. But I am talking about um, Good Doctor, the Japanese adaptation of it. I'm gonna explain more of that further into the video, but I just wanna like start off by saying that I really contemplated as to whether or not I should make another J drama video just because I have been doing it for the last couple of weeks and then the whole Dan and Phil thing happened so I needed to like vlog about it but overall like I think I have been like so fixated with my whole like Japanese obsession for like the past couple of months ever since I traveled there um, last summer but I don't know like I just feel like ever since I started this channel I wanted it to be a reflection of myself and just whatever it is that I like and what I'm into and I don't want to just make it into something that oh I, I wanted to be entertaining so I'm gonna do like challenges and shiz like that so not gonna do that that's why since I'm compelled to do another one of these things then I'm gonna do it <laughs> so but minus the whole like my own existential YouTube identity drama thing I'm gonna go back to my main point okay <laughs> In my Todome no Kiss um, video, I talked about how like Yamazaki Kento isn't exactly like I'm not into him as much as basically everybody is. Um, but in Todome no Kiss, at least I got to see some like different sides to his acting. And um, here, uh, talking about like the Good Doctor, where he has to play like um, someone who has autism and Savant syndrome. Savant syndrome is basically something that is where you have this exceptional level of like intellect and memory. Um, and you know, seeing him play, play something other than you know, someone who's like really cool or someone who's really mysterious and everybody like immediately just fall for the person so it's kind of sort of like refreshing to see him play a role like this and at the same time like just I mean it's refreshing in a way that it's different from his other roles but at the same time it's not exactly refreshing because it's basically everywhere but no hate on him I think um, his performance in this drama is actually something that made it a bit more compelling and captivating as well like he did a great job at at creating a really vulnerable but likable character um, which is very sort of like important here for 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 us to be able to appreciate how unique the storyline is but i do know that good doctor is actually a korean drama series it originated in korea I think around 2013, I have seen episodes of that in KBS or the Korean channel in our cable service provider. <laughs> it's actually compelling because of that particular theme. Like there's this question of can someone who has Savin syndrome be able to like perform something, a very, very important and very significant career as a doctor? and not just any particular doctor but someone who is focused on like pediatric surgery even america has adapted the particular series so the for the american version it stars that actor that he used to be a child actor but then you know those actors where you know their face you know where they starred in but you just couldn't remember their name yeah he's one of those i mean charlie the chocolate factory the Johnny Depp version and Spider with Chronicles and basically a lot of other things, you know him. Now, the thing with this is that I think it's becoming a trend also where American American like TV networks would adapt something from like Korea or Japan or something like that and then Korea would do the same with like Japanese dramas and then Japanese dramas would do the same with like, Korean stuff and it happens. Like I saw 
this thing where I like Suits, which is a the Western series that it has been adapted by Korea, and then now it's going to be adapted by Japan, and it's going to air around October. So most, um, so most likely I'm going to see that one as well. I've digressed into like a different point altogether, <laughs> but going back to my point, so. Um, it's actually very very interesting to me because this one for this specifically um, I uh, love the idea that this so basically there the story starts off with introducing us to this um, exceptional character that is Shin Dominato and he was backed up by um, the the chief doctor, the chief director in the hospital who also served as his guardian ever since he was little. Now there's a little bit more backstory to it as to how he wasn't exactly with his parents and he became into like the custody of the um, chief director doctor of the hospital and why eventually like he wanted to pursue um, a career in being a doctor or being a pediatric surgeon. So obviously it's gonna start off with a lot of like challenges, a lot of people questioning like is he capable of uh, performing such a task considering like you know the stigma that they're not exactly like functioning like normal people and all of those things. But the main lesson of it all, like the initial lesson of it all um, rather is that the, the main idea of diversity in itself is that we get to learn from people who are different from us, who don't really think as similar to us, where us normal people, as they say, are more focused on just following societal norms and societal ideas and usually just trying to look good in front of other people, whereas someone who thinks very differently, who thinks much more in a much more straightforward sort of way has a different perspective on things and can give like different points to different situations and besides the idea of adding him into the the, the team of the surgeons there's also this idea of well it's pediatric surgeon therefore he has to deal with like children and this is where the whole crying shabam happened this series and the reason why i wanted to talk about it is because it's the first time ever and i i i don't know but ever since i turned like 2021 20, my emotions are just off the rails most of the time i just hear a sad song and i cry tv series a really sad episode I cry but not to the point where every single episode that I do encounter I cry never happened except when I started watching the series just seeing children have to like go through different illnesses have to like deal with the burden of feeling like they're becoming a problem for their family just seeing them like even if I know it's acting obviously it just makes me feel sad to think that this is an actual problem that is happening like there are actual children who go through these kinds of things who have to like deal with cancer at the early age of like who knows what and every single like episode every single time the like the backstory of the kid is going to be like explained on screen or something i lose my sh now in terms of the casting okay now uh as i mentioned yamaken not exactly as big of a fan as everybody it's just that basically he's everywhere so and i like my j-drama so there are times when i just have to like deal with him being in almost all of them but um here his yeah as i mentioned like it's it's kind of cool to see him in a non romantic series and I know that in the Korean version there's some sort of like romance that went on with with um, the other doctor who was tasked to sort of like manage him but then for this one I kind of like the idea that they made it more platonic in a way that you know you can learn something from someone you can learn to respect someone and just see uh, improve and be better at what you're doing because you learned a different perspective from someone without it being romantic and 
I love how it just focused on not just um, Shin Dominato's growth as as someone who is training or aspiring to be a pediatric surgeon but it also contributed to the growth of the pe different people around him without any romantic entanglements whatsoever the idea like if you're someone who just wanted to watch this because it's on Yamaken's portfolio other reasons to watch it is because even like the other people in the cast are very very like good in this series. First there's um, Wenujuri who I have watched in Ouroboros I think. Yeah um, and I don't know like um, she's the female doctor who I initially was sort of like okay so is there gonna be a romance thing? I, 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 I honestly am not for it considering that I was looking for like a more platonic approach to the series if ever so I was kind of glad that they didn't do that um, she did a really great job at sort of like becoming a mentor and at the same time you know showing that she can be strict at times or she can be vulnerable at times or she can be someone who's just really passionate about um, her patients or something like that so she played the role convincingly well and it was super great and I even loved the chemistry between her and uh, Fujiki Na Naohito's character um, who is like their who is Takeyama sensei who is like their ultimate best um, top of the line um, pediatric, pediatric surgeon in the series um, and I, I sort of like thought initially I was actually shipping them in a way um, but then romances weren't really given much of like a, a spotlight in this series because it just wanted to like touch your emotion in a way that this is happening you know this is besides the idea that you know this is someone who is different who's striving to still follow his dreams to become a doctor here are also children who want to get better for the sake of them follow, following their own dreams so i kind of like that idea but going back to fujiki <laughs> naohito i'm laughing so hard every time i think of him is and it's because of the fact that i do feel like he's one of those actors that has been typecasted in a way that in a good way because i remember watching him in uh, in one litter of peers and he's like super young back then and he was the doctor there and then fast forward to like how many years later and now he's playing a doctor again and he still looks fine okay just putting it out there not really that important of a fact but just wanted to say it but he i, I felt like you know he has this like aura in a way that is easily typecasted into roles that are professionals because in Proposal Day Sakusen I remember his role there was a teacher and I saw his portfolio that he played in a lot of like medical dramas so there's probably that air of he looks credible as a doctor let's go with him yeah. overall like it did a great job at telling a story uh, like telling the story that it wants to tell and it left on a very like nice and positive note so yeah, I recommend this if you're into like medical dramas, emphasis on the drama part, but still have, you know, if you're into like there, if you want like an eye candy or something, you also have that added bonus when you want like good acting. So definitely this one is good. I, mean, I don't know about the American version. I haven't seen it yet, but if you're into like Western dramas more, then maybe you should check that out. There's also a Korean version. So if you're into K-drama more, check it out. But for J-drama peeps like me, I recommend this one. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Um, I don't know, like have you seen any of the adaptations? Talk to me down in the comments below. You know the drill. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you again soon in a new one.